In one of my earliest videos, I showed this custom connector. And boy, did I struggle to get these connections in. But uh, with this machine, that will be a thing of the past. I'm John for Proper Printing and this will not be a review video. This will be a video in which I'm going to show what I would do with uh, an Anycubic Photon S if one was given to me. And Anycubic has given me a Photon S to try and uh, see what I come up with. As some of you already know, I'm working on a project in which I'm going to print rims. <laughs> I'm not going to print rims with it. I'm upgrading the CR10 to make it able to print rims. I need a custom connector and not just the custom connector that you already know. This custom connector will be capable of connecting and disconnecting anything of that whole printer. So that means almost 40 connections and four of them are power connections. So that's going to be a tricky connector. It hasn't got a large build size, but I don't need this size of a connector. I think that this printer can be very interesting to print custom connectors. I'm going to use transparent green. I think that a 40 pin connector which is transparent would look sick. I've specially bought this 100 millimeter one to one macro lens. I'm going to, to make some pleasing footage to show that 40 pin transparent neatly printed a <laughs> custom connector with this lens. I'm very curious how that, that thing is going to look. That's what we are going to do in this video. So be prepared for some satisfying footage. Let's head over to the computer and uh, arrange that new connector. Okay, we're at my computer. And before we are going to design that 40 pin connector, I'm going to test it first with this smaller connector. I have designed this connector in one of my earlier videos of that foldable N3 Pro. And this connector was used to connect and disconnect the whole bed. And it has this uh, cable chain integrated to it. This connector has all the connections that's needed in a 40 pin connector as well. Okay, let's make this part open apart. This is a bit different than you're used to with a standard FDM technique. Normally you would say that you're going to rotate it into this direction and lay it flat and going to print it. If you're going to do that with this printing technique, then it would most likely fail. The major problem of this resin printer is that the build plate has to detach the whole part from the bottom of the reservoir. And if it's oriented into this direction, then chances are that it will stick to the bottom and not to the build plate itself. So now I can go to this tab, add the supports. Okay, now I can store this to the USB stick and start printing. I've got two different resins here, the transparent green and gray. And the gray resin is already in here. I've used this gray to print something awesome that I'm going to show you later in this video. First thing that you would want to do if you're going to do something with, with the resin printer is uh, put the gloves on. If you have like me sweaty hands, and you have difficulties getting these gloves on. Fortunately, I, uh, I did a lot of climbing. I'm going to put some magnesium on my hands. I've used a flat ball tile, so this will be my dirty surface. I've just unscrewed the hinges because I don't have room here. If you're going to pour it back, add a sieve to your... Uh, what is this called? So if you have some failed prints, then there are some parts that are left in this bin. Okay, and another important thing to buy if you're going to use this machine is a lot of paper because you're going to need it. And for cleaning everything, I just use this windscreen washer fluid. Uh, most people use IPA. This is cheaper. This works for cleaning up the standard build plate as well. Okay, before you're going to put this back in, I would suggest to re-level this build plate. That first layer is so important. Shake well, don't drink this stuff. Okay, if you're starting out, then my advice would be to use the green resin because it looks way more toxic than the gray resin. This doesn't look healthy. I've cleaned everything, so now the fun can begin. Print. And you don't have to watch that first layer because you cannot see it. This is looking good. 
It's a lot easier to cut away the support while it's still soft. Ah, oh, f***. I completely destroyed this connector. This snapped off. That's because of this support structure. It's uh, pretty brittle and it was pretty hard to remove. But for this test to see if this con these connections fit, this will be enough. So I'm going to clean this up anyway and uh, cure it. And first I'm going to do a rough cleaning just in this uh, windscreen washer fluid. I've now put it into this ultrasonic cleaner at 50 degrees. Set a timer to 10 minutes. I'm uh, getting the hell out of here because it makes a lot of noise. And just in case, don't forget to wash your hands. Okay, now it's ready for curing. And I'm using this high-tech curing station. It's just a mirror with this nail polish dryer. Yeah, there's a lot of UV light coming from that. Let's see if I can get some connections in here. I need a tool. Ah. <laughs> nope. Now let's see how these large terminals would do. Screwdriver. I'm going to use some more force and do this on the floor. Back to the drawing board. Okay, I've changed these measurements a bit, so hopefully it will fit now. There's only one way to find out. I have to remove this connection. And uh, I'm going to show you how brittle this material is. I have found the connection. It's still in one piece. Nice. This is the way to do it. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get these connections in this new connector. Okay. The dimensions of these pins are correct. Now the power connection. No, that one is too loose. The dimensions of these pins are spot on. And now I have to find the proper dimensions for these large terminals. They say a third time is a charm, don't they? Nice. This is perfect. <laughs> and now I want these connections in there. <laughs> now let's put these in here. So I have one complete connector. I finally have the dimensions for this connector. So now I can design a 40 pin connector. But first I'm going to change this lens and make some macro shots of this thing. Holy sh**. <laughs> this is insane. Man. I can't get closer. This is incredible. I will just uh, start designing and stop playing with this macro lens. The first thing that I'm going to do is drag these segments into this empty design so I can create my own configuration. I can imagine that you're asking yourself why don't you just buy a connector like this? It already has all these connections. There are a few reasons. The first is I need more connections. <laughs> I need six of these. That's what I figured out later because I also have an enclosure heater. I want to make custom configurations and I want to add a safety feature. Uh, four of these power connections are going to be at 230 volts. This will be the layout. I have to design the body and then I uh, can print it. But I think this is going to be one hell of a connector. Oké, 
Okay, I finished the design. This is the male version. Uh, I've added these colors here. Uh, these connections are going to be at 230 volts. And I don't want to be able to touch them that easily. And I've designed a female version. It's this one over here. With a similar safety feature. And colors on this side. These four holes at the corners are used for mounting this thing to the panel. And these two here are used to uh, mount this mill. And I've already printed it. And <laughs> I've learned something. My idea was to add inserts into these holes here. Well, this hole is too small, so I have, to, I have to redo it. But the interesting thing is that I was adding these brass inserts. I didn't press them in, of course. I've used my soldering iron. Adding inserts into here isn't going well because it's starting to crack. Yeah, I have to uh, add some, uh, some nuts here. I'm going to clean this up, remove the supports and see how this turns out. Use some compressed air because you can blow out all these tiny holes. And that's a lot easier than doing that with paper. I've printed both connectors, male and female, and they fit. But I've learned something. This female version is very clear and looks awesome. But this male version is kind of dull. It seems that this is due to the solution that I've used in an ultrasonic cleaner. I've used some special cleaning stuff, but I think that's a bit too aggressive for this stuff. And I now have used uh, dishwashing soap for this one, and it looks way better. So I'm reprinting this one, but I have to wait for four hours for the print to finish. Four hours. Okay, I'm very happy with the result of these connectors. And earlier in this video I told you that I'm going to show you something cool. I'm going to take this car for a spin. Mercedes. I finally have 51 pin connector in which I'm going to connect in which I can connect and disconnect all connections of that printer. Uh, I have to uh, add that enclosure first with all the electronics and then I can add all the connections in while doing that. I finally have my own emblem for this car. It's so cool. I still have to redesign that emblem because it took me almost an hour to get it in there and it already broke off. And right now it's almost breaking off. I'm going to fill this thing up with gasoline before it's, run, before it's running empty and then I'm going to work on the next video. I really hope you enjoyed watching. Anycubic, thanks a lot for sending that printer. It's a really awesome printer and I'm very happy that I have that thing. If you want to do more with 3D printing, that's an awesome printer to have. I really hope you have enjoyed watching and if you did, then hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider doing so. And if you like this video, then uh, it would be awesome if you're going to share it on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, because that helps a lot. So again, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye!